Welcome back. Picking up right where we left off, let's go ahead and make a random loot generator here where our goblins are going to drop a random set of loot. So we have our common loot logic cube that we created last time around. Let's go ahead and fill this out. So we're gonna make a common loot set, a uncommon loot set, and a rare loot set. And each of these are gonna be different logic cubes. But first, let's fill out our common loot set. So let's jump inside the brain here. And right now we're only creating a knife. So let's go ahead and change that where uh, when, let's say, loot drop is equal to uh, two. Oop, not magic. There we go, number two. When our loot drop random number is equal to two, then let's go ahead and create uh, something else. So let's go to objects, gallery picker, and uh, let's say uh, let's say it'll create an apple. So uh, apple A is one of the things. Uh, and then we steal this uh, at position root position. It gets better the more code you have, the easier it is to copy things from other lines of code here. You know, I can just really copy this entire thing um, and now say when loot drop is equal to uh, three instead of two then we are going to, instead of create apple, let's create a coin. So we're going to gallery picker. Um, let's just type in coin in the search up here. And we're going to choose coin. Now, I, I also think I want to give myself, you know, some enemies just won't drop any loot. So I want to give myself uh, that option. So right now we have loot drop is equal to a random number between one and three. Uh, so it's always going to drop loot right now. Let's just increase that to uh, a random number between 1 and 4. So we have a 25% chance now of this dropping nothing. So, you know, there's a 25% chance or 1 in 4 chance of the number being 4. And if the number is 4, then nothing is dropped. So we have that uh, pretty well set up for our um, common loot brain. Let's uh, copy this, create a whole new one. And let's call this one, uh, instead of common loot, this will be the uncommon loot brain. So this is where, um, you know, a bit better loot might be in. And, you know, I'm right now going to limit it to just three per brain. But, of course, you can build this out to be, you know, 50 different items that could possibly be dropped. So uh, feel free to expand this as much as you want. So just like before, we don't really need to change anything here or anything here. Um, the one thing I do want to change though is I'm going to say that with, if you kind of get an uncommon loot drop, you're always going to get loot. So let's bring this number back down to three. Uh, so now it's loot drop equals random number between one and three. So now you always are going to get some form of loot. And um, a knife, an apple, and a coin, they're not too exciting. So let's make those more uncommon. Uh, so let's go to the gallery picker. Um, and instead of the knife, let's say uh, we're going to get a sword. Um, let's just say maybe a stone sword um, for drop number two. Maybe uh, we're going to get a shield here. Um, so let's just do a uh, fighter shield. And for number three, um, let's say we're going to get an axe. So uh, let's choose a Knight's Warrior Axe. So th these are a bit better. So um, that's really all we need to do for Uncommon. And let's then make our Rare Loot Drop here. So we're going to rename this to Rare. And again, we, don't we actually don't really need to change anything up the top here. Just like Uncommon, I'm going to only have three different rare items. Of course, again, you can expand that to as many as you want. Just make sure that you change this random number up here to account for however many things you can cycle between. And uh, we're going to have uh, three even better items. So let's choose, um, let's choose a sword again, but maybe a better sword. So how about let's do the Knight's Legendary Sword for uh, one rare drop. Um, for the second rare drop, um, let's look at, at the kind of scepter options we have. So uh, maybe Avalon's epic scepter would be a cool drop. Um, and then for loot drop number three, um, let's say that you know it's a really cool healing item. So maybe it's uh, blueberries, which give you uh, max HP. 
So we now have our three different kind of loot sets here. Um, and each one of them, depending on what is called, will drop a different piece of loot. So how do we then uh, call these within the goblin? Well, in the goblin, we're also going to be using some random number generation. So let's jump into the goblin brain. Right now, we have when hit by attack, started to create common loot at position above. So right now, the goblin is always going to create this common loot logic cube, and it's always going to drop um, one of these three items or maybe no item at all. It now needs to uh, have a chance, um, maybe a slightly less chance to get uncommon loot and even less of a chance to get rare loot. So we're going to create a new number variable here and we're going to set this equal to a random number between 1 and 100 because I want to give percentage chances so it's really easy when I'm working within a number set between 1 and 100 to understand you know there's a 70% chance, a 90% chance, a 10% chance and so on and so forth. So we're going to go to values, number, and I can choose a loot drop here also because loot drop right now is just a local variable across all of our objects. So there's not really, uh, there's no worry about this uh, conflicting with anything right now. If I were to set this as global and other things as global, then, then that would be conflicting. But right now I don't have to worry about that. So loot drop is equal to, let's go over to math, random, say random number. Uh, and then we're going to start at uh, one. And we're going to say 2, go to values, number, new number, and 100. And we also want to make sure, again, we're setting as integer. So we now have this random number loot drop is going to be set to be equal to some random number between 1 and 100. So say um, I want there to be a 70% chance that they are going to drop a uh, common loot drop then a 20% chance that they will drop a uncommon and a 10% chance they're going to drop a rare. So we can look at a range right here. So when loot drop is greater than, well actually, right now for this we just have to look at loot drop is less than uh, 71. So that would, that would look at numbers between 0, or sorry, 1, and 70. If uh, loot drop is less than 71, then we're going to create common loot at position above. Let's uh, copy that line, paste it below. So now we're going to say when loot drop is um, greater than or equal to 71, then we are going to choose our in-world picker and choose uncommon loot here. But we also need to give this a top constraint because right now it's basically just looking for if the number is uh, greater than or equal to 71, then it's uncommon loot. But I want to set numbers 90 to 100 as the rare loot. So uh, we can use a uh, and right here and repeat this statement a bit, but instead say loot drop is, uh, let's go to compare, say less than. Uh, 91. So now this sets the number basically if uh, our loot drop random number is between 71 and 90 then it creates uncommon loot and then if the loot drop is greater than or equal to let's just copy 91 here if greater than or equal to 91 then we are going to create rare loot. You can use this set if you want to uh, even have more different loot drops. So you can have common, uncommon, rare, legendary, platinum, however many levels you want. It's very easy when you're operating between a uh, number between 1 and 100 because then you can decide on what kind of percentage chance you want all this to happen in. So this is all, uh, this is all great so far. I, this should uh, work just as intended. Let's go ahead and go into test. So let's go uh, start punching some goblins. So that guy, oh, he had no loot drop. Oh, that one had a, that was a rare loot drop. He, he dropped some blueberries. That one dropped a coin. That one dropped a scepter, which is also, a, which is also a rare. So I'm off to a good start. Uh, that one dropped a coin as well. That one dropped a knife. That one also dropped a knife. 
uh, that one dropped a coin, and that one dropped a shield. So just uh, just like that, I have a lot of different options here. Now the one thing I don't like is the fact this blueberry, you know, these th these objects had tumbling physics, and that made them tumble to the ground. But this blueberry does not have tumbling physics; it has fixed physics. So say I want to fix that in this blueberry so that it falls and tumbles to the ground just like everything else. So in order to do that, I need to work with templates with these objects. So let's go into test. Or sorry, back into edit. We're going to go into uh, our prop gallery. And we already had blueberries as our last selected thing. So we're just going to choose uh, blueberries right from here. And um, we're going to go into edit of this of this prop, go to properties, go to physics, and this is where we can change a bunch of physics on this item. Um, right now it has fixed physics. If that has character physics, then that means it kind of moves around like a character where it can jump and, and it's always on the ground. Um, but we want this to have tumbling physics where it'll always just tumble to the ground if it's in the air and you know if you kick it, it'll kind of tumble around. That's the kind of physics we want with this thing. We also want to set this uh, to be a template. And now we can go into our, uh, we want to put this next to our, our rare loot, or maybe kind of in, in line behind it. So we know, uh, we know that's part of this kind of set. Because then in rare loot, we can, instead of calling something right now, we're just calling from something from our gallery picker, we can call in something from the in world picker. And you can use this to make all fully custom loot drops with their, with their own behaviors. You know, we jump into the brain of this blueberry. It looks like basically when it's been interacted with, it heals the target um, by 25. Um, 0.25 would be 25% basically of its max health. It's like we could, for instance, go in right here and make it so it, uh, it heals 0.9, so 90% of your max health. So we've changed some of the behaviors, we've changed uh, some of the physics, and now this thing is being brought in. So we can do the same thing with, you know, for instance, say we want to have this knight's legendary sword, but we also want it to be colored differently. So we go to uh, the properties, appearance, and change that crystal to say we wanted it to be, you know, a cool red crystal. So we uh, make this one a template, and we go to rare loot, and again, we choose in-world picker and select that. And that's how you build out all of the custom items that would go into each of your loot sets. We are going to uh, stop it there with the looting, um, but you can continue it on to make more and more custom things. The last thing I want to do here quickly is, so this whole time we've been doing the tutorial, these goblins have been stationary, they haven't done anything. Let's at least change that a bit. Um, so let's copy this goblin right here. And uh, I want to go to Brain Gallery on this goblin and go, to, go through the Brain Gallery until you find, go to E and you'll find an enemy brain. This is the default enemy brain. So we can copy this page and paste that onto our goblin we're using right here. And I did it that way so I didn't lose any of this code that I, I already had. So we can go ahead and paste that. And what that does is uh, we go below all the code that we wrote, and it pastes all of that logic of this enemy attacking you below. Um, it also, you notice line 8 wants team equals team 2. It's the same as line 1 wants team equals team 2. So just go through and make sure you don't have any duplicate code. So we can just delete this line of code. But now this, uh, this goblin, what he's going to do is he's going to um, look for his nearest enemy and set that as an object variable called my enemy. Then when he is uh, less than 20 meters away from his enemy, he's going to move towards it. And uh, then when he is less than two meters away from the enemy, he's going to start attacking that enemy um, with a, a pause attack that is also equal to a random number one to three. So uh, this is actually all stuff that we've covered kind of elsewhere, just what all this logic kind of means. So on your own time, you can break this down and understand really what it does. But it's, it's pretty simple code. So we can uh, delete this goblin we were using to store that spare brain in. And now our goblins, they finally will have some logic in them. So we go back to the test. And look at that. They actually kind of, uh, they're going to attempt to actually attack me finally. So I have some form of a challenge here.
Um, and look at that. It was, it looks like I only got all commons that time. So pretty unlike, pretty unlucky uh, loot drop there. But you know, that's, that's the great thing about randomness is sometimes you have a very lucky loot drop like we had last time and sometimes you have a very unlucky loot drop. So uh, that'll do it for uh, random loot. And uh, next we're going to actually look at creating an inventory system that you can actually kind of view all of your loot in. Now the inventory system can get pretty complicated. You, well, you can make it pretty complicated. We're gonna keep it a bit simpler, but it's still gonna take a bit of time to put in the inventory together. So stay tuned for that and uh, we'll see you soon.